Alright, welcome back. So, uh, I got the sprocket in. They sent me the wrong one. But on my live stream, I drilled a couple holes in it. Got the sprocket mounted up. Not a problem. It's not 100% aligned. I'd like to get a couple more screws in it because there's only two out of six. But that's for a later date. You see how the chain's going up over here? It's because there's a roller up top. Uh, down here, the chain is hitting on this metal. So I'm going to have to cut that back. But right now, I'm about to pull the engine off. I got the plate where I'm pretty sure I want it. Chain's pretty lined up, as straight as I think I'm going to get it, so good enough for me. Time to pull the engine off, weld the plate up, get the engine bolted down, and see where we're at. Alrighty guys, so uh, plate's all welded on. I'm going to clean this up just a little bit on the top, not too much, but I welded every side that I could, every little spot that I could, that way I knew it was nice and strong, so uh. Clean it up, put the engine on. It's a bit smoky in here, but uh, here it is. So, I had to do a little persuasion with my hammer here. Not pretty, but hey, I'm probably going to put a tensioner down here, mount it on the engine plate. But this actually might be temporary. We're going to see how this centrifugal clutch works out. We're going to do a test ride like this, hopefully here at the end of this video, part 3. And then, uh, depending on how it acts, if it's sluggish, not enough uh, takeoff, we will uh, try a torque converter out on it. Torque converter should fit in here perfect. That will uh, put my chain to about here or so, so that shorten it almost, uh, I don't know, 8 to 10 inches, give or take. If not a foot, so that'll be nice to take a foot of slack out. And I might be able to take more out because I might not need this guide up here. But for right now, there's a guide down here, guide up here. They're already there. I don't know if they're actually guides or not, but I'm going to use them. I got to make a header for it because the stock exhaust doesn't fit. No biggie. I put one of my stickers on the front. Uh, engine has not been broke in, so I'm going to have to do that, but now I'm about to do a throttle and then foot pegs, because both of those are essential for a test ride. So, I'll bring you guys back here in just a moment with either the foot pegs or the throttle or the exhaust. Alright guys, so uh, I just got attacked in a couple spots. I haven't uh, welded anything on the exhaust. I took uh, the straight piece, cut a bunch of notches in it, and bent it over in my 90. I just have two tacks holding it to that little plate that I made. Got all the holes drilled out. So, now I'm about to unbolt it. And, uh, we'll pull the whole, uh, exhaust manifold off completely. That way, I can have it bolted together while welding it up. And that way, my little plate don't warp. So we're going to go ahead and pull it off there and start welding it up. Good enough for me. Good enough for now, at least. So, uh, let's throw it on. Alright. There it is. Hatter's all bolted up. I'm gonna make a little tab to mount somewhere on here for, uh, support. There's a hole in right here, so I'll probably do some kind of tab, weld it off of here, and attach it to there. Oop. Yeah, from here down to here. That way the vibrations doesn't kill it. Now it's all left 
Only thing left to do is foot pegs and break in the engine. So let's get started on the foot pegs, guys. Alright, first one's done. I know it looks like crap. Uh, I will be cutting the excess off here. This will get cut down shorter. Uh, this might just be temporary. But it's a foot peg. So all I did was take a little bolt that has a washer on it. Might be a little hot. Welded it all the way around. Camera don't want to focus, but you guys get the picture. Welded it all the way around. And then I just took, slid it in the tube, and welded it into place. And then screwed on the bike. There used to be a little rack or a piece of metal that went from here up and around on both sides. So we're just going to use the existing uh, bolts. Well, the existing holes and... Uh, just use them for now. It'll work for me. So I'm about to knock this other one out. And I'll bring you guys back here in a minute. It'll hold. Smells a little funny. <clears throat> Not sure from what. Might be the pipe. Um, it was making a couple little clanking sounds. Not sure what for. So uh, I'm going to try to take it out for a little test ride. And uh, see what that's all about. But before I do the test ride. That was the first heat cycle. So I'm going to do another heat cycle on it. I'm going to let it cool down first. And then run it again. Sorry about the angle. But yeah, we're going to let it sit here, cool down. There's snow on the ground in April. So, it'll cool off pretty quick out here. And we'll start it up and run it again. Hopefully the engine's not junk, because if so, we'll return it. But I'll bring you guys right back in a second. Alright guys, so the break-in period went fine. I went on a little test ride and started overheating the clutch. I ordered a different clutch that I was going to put on here, but I think I'm just going to run the CVT. I already started mocking it up. You'll see that in part four. So stay tuned and I'll catch you guys in the next one.